Hi, this is John Records Landecker. Stay tuned. Taped with Rabbi Doug is next. We're gonna see Rabbi Doug. We're gonna see Rabbi Doug. We're gonna see Rabbi Doug on your TV tonight. But Daddy, I wanna watch Monday Night Football. Forget about Monday Night Football. There's no other thing we're gonna watch on Monday but Rabbi Doug. Yeah, Rabbi Doug on TV tonight. We're going to see Rabbi Doug. Oh, how many money talk about that? Shalom and welcome to Taped with Rabbi Doug. You know, every once in a while, you get to have your idols on your TV show. <laughs> and uh, years ago, I was able to have this idol on my TV show just for a short interview while he was performing. Today, I get him for a whole show, John Records Landdecker. It's an honor to be here. Thank it's an you. honor to have you Hello. on the show. Thank you. My favorite DJ ever, growing up with you, doing the continued oldies over the years it's really exciting to have you in the tv studio with well me. it's great to see you again and it's great to see you again um of course one of the reasons i wanted to have you on uh currently yeah. is because you have a new book out um it is your um uh beautiful records <laughs> truly is my middle name book well you know uh, what it's an old book and a new book combined right. and this is the hall of fame edition yeah because you are in the radio hall I of fame am. and yes it's, it's unbelievable and i want to talk about you for a minute and okay I, I hope i don't embarrass you but I, um so john records landecker as we know records truly yeah. is his middle name yeah uh has a 40 year plus uh career in radio one that uh the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Cleveland saw fit to feature yeah. in their radio exhibit. Um, he was born and raised in Ann Arbor, Michigan, and that's where he started in radio. He's gone on to entertain audiences in Michigan and a number of stations in Philadelphia. And of course, back in the day, WLS, we all listened to WLS growing up. The Big 89. The Big 89. Yeah. Unbelievable. Um, and then, of course, he was on The Loop, WLUP, G106, WCKG, <laughs> uh, Magic 104, yeah. uh, uh, WJMK. Um, and then uh, he was in Toronto, on in Cleveland again. Uh, and when he was working back for WLS, when we all remember him in the 1970s growing up, John was named the Billboard Magazine's Radio Personality of the Year. In 1990, his uh, WJMK uh, Magic 104 <laughs> show was named the best morning show in Chicago. And in the early 2000s, it was recognized as the best oldies radio show in America by Radio and Records. In 2017, John was inducted into the National Radio Hall of Fame. Congratulations. It's Thank so you. exciting. Thank you. Um, really a, a great thing. Um, this is his first book but not the first edition of his book because he added a lot of things to it uh he has a lot of cds that he's put out uh he and his uh famous band that toured for so long uh landecker and the legends he has one out in uh 94 volume 2 in 95 baby boomers in 96 <laughs> live long and perspire wow in 97 uh landecker and the legends number five in 98 and the 20th century hits and bits in 99 he still lives in Indiana, not far from the Chicago area, uh, with his wife. And uh, yes, um, he is John Records. Um, this new book uh, contains new chapters mm -hmm. filled with great stories and more than 70 new photos from the right. original edition. Right. And uh, it's your Hall of Fame edition. And uh, I'm so excited to have you on the show and so excited to, to show your book to our audience. Thank you. Uh, I know they're going to be very interested. You are an iconic radio personality, and no one will, will deny that or question that. Can you tell me, first of all, um, I should say, tell our viewers, because I've heard you tell me this before, but uh, how did your parents name you records? And we're not going to go into deep detail. No, you know, the book. we can, because, you know, I, I've gotten over the hump, if you will, that people still don't believe it. I mean, it's really quite extraordinary to me that this name would be so unbelievable in the context of somebody being on the radio. I just am baffled by it to a certain Still extent. Still today. It happens all the time. It happened at the Hall of Fame, of all places, where uh -huh. you think they would know, uh -huh. you know. Um, my mother's name, my mother's maiden name is Marjorie Victoria Records. 
My grandfather is, was William J. Records, uh, who lived near Franklin, Indiana, about 20 miles south of Indianapolis. Uh, they gave me Records as my middle name because it was my mother's maiden name. And I, when did I first think about using it on the air? You know, uh, I was going to college on the, it would be the west coast of Michigan. Mm -hmm. And I listened to WCFL. Uh -huh. And everybody on WCFL had something. Uh -huh. There was Barney Pip. Uh -huh. He had Pip People. There was, I believe it was Dick Williamson, Dick Williamson's World. There was Jim Stagg. He had the Stagg line. And I guess I thought one day, I wonder if I have anything. And I don't know, I was filling out some form or something. And a light went on. And oh, look at that. <laughs> what a coincidence. Records is my middle name. It's so cool. I'll use that. I never, ever expected it to last this long. And be part of your legacy. Well, you know, I thought people would go, hey, hey what? they'd go, really? And then I'd go, yeah. And then they'd go, isn't that cute? And that'd be the end of it. But it, I bet I get asked it once a week. So t tell me something. You brought up WCFL because the, the two big... AM radio stations, mm -hmm. they played music in Chicago, were WLS and WCFL. Yep. And uh, certainly there were some big name personalities on WCFL oh. like there were on WLS. Right. And uh, did you did you ever get any, any, you know, pickings and pulls from WCFL to say, come on over here, we no, want you. No, I've never, uh, I never received any job offers from uh, WCFL. There were other uh, radio personalities. Uh, Larry Lujak he was went back and forth. On both, yeah. Um, a guy named Chuck Knapp went back and forth. Uh, but no, I didn't receive any offers, but there, that lineup at WLS in the mid 70s was truly unbeatable. It I mean, was. it was, uh, let's see, Larry Lujak, Tommy Edwards, the both of them to get together to do animal little stories. Tommy, little right? Tommy, yeah. Little Tommy. Uh, Fred, Winston, Fred Winston, JJ Jeffrey, myself, Bob Surratt, Von Daniels, I mean, really amazing and it, it, it was amazing it really it still was amazing. Is amazing as you look at it it's almost like saying uh you know kessinger beckard william sano banks it's kind of like yeah, part of it, chicago you know and people may not realize this but back then if you wanted to listen to rock and roll music you had two choices and they were both on the am band there was no internet there was no uh satellite radio and barely and now radio. how many and even fm was sort of like this stepchild that was, it was there, but they weren't really using it. And now, how many different slices of quote unquote contemporary rock music, whatever you want to call it, are available now? It's, it's really uh, amazing. It's um, a smorgasbord. It sure is, it sure is. So, you know, a lot of radio DJs who were popular and are still on the air, yeah. they kind of went with the trend. They went from the oldies when they were back in the day, what right. were big in the 70s, and then they started, and they went to the 80s music, they went to the right. 90s music, they went to the, you know, to the, to the 2000s, and uh, some of them are still working in the radio, doing pop music or, or right. rock and roll, or talk. what would be called classic rock right. and roll, and some are doing talk, talk. Yep. like Bob Surratt, a perfect example. Yeah. Uh, and, um, Yet you always stayed in the oldies. You mm. stayed in the the the. You well, know. I, I tried a couple of things that didn't work out. Uh huh. Uh huh. I was at WGN for a while. Uh huh. Uh, and they changed management, and that was that. And then I was back at WLS for a while when they were a talk station, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, that didn't last. But the key to it was that. You were talking about that uh, Magic 104.3. Uh -huh. uh, it was a morning show. And as radio evolved through the 90s and more and more choices were available, the only time of the day that an air personality was allowed to be a personality, if you will, was mornings. Uh -huh. And as a matter of fact, on music stations, I'm pretty sure it's still the way it was. Now, back... In the 70s, what we were talking about, it wasn't like that at all. Everybody did something. Mm -hmm. I mean, around the clock, uh, the personalities had, excuse me, as much input, uh, impact on the listener as the music did. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. Uh, when I was on at night, 
um, in the 70s. And that kind of personality radio does not exist anymore. Um, obviously, talk stations, they talk. Right. So, I mean, it comes as part of the format. I mean, the only place you can really find it is on satellite radio. Today. Well, also, but if you listen to morning shows on any music station, if the owners are going to allow anything to happen at all, that's where it's going to happen. That, it's absolutely yeah, true. That's yeah. where it, that's where it starts. There's no question. Mm -hmm. There's no question. Um, do you have a a, a favorite uh, DJ that's uh, out there today still doing music? Wow. Um, do you, Do you have someone that that you know either was a contemporary or an idol of yours when you were young in the business uh, that's that's still out there that you really look up to? Not that uh, I've met some, um, but they're not currently in radio. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Very nice. So tell me, when when you sat down to write your book, mm -hmm. uh, Records Truly is my middle name, you obviously wanted to talk about your career in radio because that's that's your life. Yeah. Uh, what do you think is your most outlandish story in your book uh, that, that readers would, would, would be caught up with? Well, I don't know. Uh, there's, there's also a lot of family history mm -hmm. in this book. My father... Jewish in Germany, mm -hmm. um, coming over to the United States, being a sociology professor at uh, the University of Michigan. Um, there's a lot of that, uh -huh. and there's a lot of personal. It's great, and there's so there's a lot pictures. of there's a lot of there's also all the great pictures in the book that are uh, your personal family. You know, but there's the highs, the highs and lows of living. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then there's also the radio stuff, but it's more than just. Here's what I did at this radio station. But the, I've thought about this, and my current answer to that type of question is, this isn't the most outrageous or uh, Funny shocking story. or anything, but to me, I would say that this is the highlight of my entire career, what I'm about to tell you. Okay. Mel Brooks and Carl Reiner did, you, did years ago the 2,000-year-old man. Mm -hmm. It was a bit that I think they did at parties in the 50s. And then it turned into something in the 60s. And in the year 2000, they did a CD called The 2,000-Year-Old Man in the Year 2000. And I had both of them on the phone for an interview that went about a half an hour. And I asked if I could talk about Blazing Saddles. And Mel Brooks said, absolutely. I said, okay, there's that scene where Hedy Lamar goes through the window and he opens it up and he looks down to the guy being hung <laughs> and there's a guy sitting in a wheelchair with a noose around his neck. This one is a doozy. And there's a little back and forth and uh, Hedy Lamar does this throwaway line, ah yes, the Dr. Gillespie killings. Yes, the Dr. Gillespie killings. Well, do your best. I said, I asked, is that a reference to Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie in the Dr. Kildare movies in the, well, I guess, 30s or 40s? There was a slight pause, and Mel Brooks said, absolutely right. No one has ever asked me that question. Oh. Every once in a while, I guess I'll run into a kindred spirit. I was like, I don't know, name, you see, I, you sit down with Paul McCartney and you say something about a song and he goes, you know, you're absolutely right. No one ever said that about one of those uh -huh. Beatles songs. How you would feel if that was your, and Mel Brooks was, is like my, I, if I have a, a, an idol, so to speak. Comedic you, idol. Oh man, he really is something. And not only incredible comedian, but incredible writer. Oh, uh, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I'm a big fan. I'm a big so fan. am I. And Carl that, Reiner also. I'm a big fan of Carl Reiner. And also. they were telling just fantastic stories about their time together, starting uh, like in the late '40s, uh -huh. uh, and that's one of my favorite interviews ever. Oh, that's so cool. And in the end, he blesses me. Oh. You know, and I'm like, whoa. Mel Brooks just bless me. That's so you cool. know, that's, that's so cool. that is the greatest. That's yeah. great. That's great. Reading through your book, it's enthralling because it kind of builds on your life, your career yeah. all together as one. Um, 
in your career you must have met, which you mentioned in here a number of times, people that that you really, you know, anybody would want to meet and stuff. Of all the musicians that you had in the radio studio or interviewed on the telephone, uh, who were those that you said, oh, I wouldn't give up this experience for anything in the world? George Harrison. George Harrison. Um, A telephone interview. I've known Dennis DeYoung from Styx. Who's been on my show before. Hi, I'm Dennis DeYoung, and you're watching Taped with Rabbi Doug. I was the first air personality at WLS to play the song Lady on uh-huh, the air. Uh-huh. And, um, first Styx hit. First Styx hit. Uh-huh. And we've seen each other off and on mm-hmm. throughout the years. Um, you know, I know, the, I know the Bucking, you know, all the local bands, the, the Buckinghams, I, I got to know them very well because okay. we did a lot of those shows together in the 90s. Uh-huh. Um, uh, Carl Giamarisi of the Buckinghams. Uh, uh-huh. um, I know Carl. Come on. Uh, I'm, excuse me, I'm drawing a mental blank. Uh, That's okay. Jim Peterick. Jim Peterick. Jim Peterick. Jim come Peterick. on. I just had him on my show. Ides of March. Just about Survivor. Three, three months ago. Yeah. I had him on my show. Hey everybody, it's Jim Peterick of the Ides of March, and you're watching Rabbi Doug. Great God in heaven, you know I love you. Rabbi! Jim is great. Uh, what, Jim what is color great. Hair, I'm a big fan. What color hair did he have it when he was It was red here? and orange. It was red and orange. Um, uh, I met up with him at, at uh, City Winery in Chicago. Sure. Uh, second time I saw the Ides of March there, and this time uh, he met with me afterwards to to do a little piece for the show. That's great. And he was warm oh, and yeah. friendly as could be. The last time I was with him, I sat next to him uh, watching the Doobie Brothers uh, in Channel 11 in the studio oh, at right. Soundstage. Soundstage. And he yeah. was sitting next to me, and uh, my brother had just recorded with his band something at Jim Peterick's house like a month before that. Wow. So we had a long conversation and stuff, and, and here he, he was just as warm and kind as could be. He's oh, a great yeah. guy. They're great guys. And He's a talented, great guy. Yeah. They all are, as a matter of fact. The whole band is nice. Yeah. 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 That's great. That's yeah. great. Um, what about radio executives? What about them? Uh, <laughs> Who, who are you still friends with in the radio executive world? There are so many radio executives. I mean, who am I friends with in the I, radio executive world? Who are you still in touch with? World? Who are you still in touch with in the radio executive world that we might know their name? Because oh, I don't know if you'd know their name. Mm-hmm. Um, Marty Greenberg was the general manager at WLS when this. Uh, I know who Marty Greenberg the, is. The uh, uh, this juggernaut was going right. on in the mid seventies, and we have communicated on Facebook to each uh-huh. other, but. I don't believe... Oh, John Guerin. How oh, can John I find him? Gar- what John am I saying? Guerin is, John, John Guerin, Guerin and I are, are, are still friends. I'm, I'm I mean, I just saw... Him. <laughs> yeah, how can I almost forget John Guerin? You know why? Because I don't look upon him as, as an executive. Uh-huh, uh-huh. That's not an insult. Uh-huh. You know, he's just a he's friend. He's one of the guys. But he, yeah. yeah, he was a program director. Yeah. What am I saying? Mm-hmm. Very uh, nice. Marty was the general manager. And John was the general manager, too, but not when I was there. And uh, we've definitely kept in touch. Mm-hmm. Uh, in fact, he was, I just saw him a couple of weeks ago. So what's your relationship with your former producer and uh, uh, sidekick, uh, uh, Rick Kempfer? How, how, are you still good friends with him? Of he's course. He's been on our show a number of times. Of course I am. He's the publisher he's of this publisher book. He's the publisher of your book. He's yes. the publisher of your book. Here it is. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and not only that, but he's the, really the co-author. Uh-huh. It says down there, produced by Rick Kempfer. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. So you guys are still close. Oh, yeah. He's a great guy. Oh, yeah. He's a yeah. great guy. Yeah. How many years did he produce your show on the radio? Ten years. Yeah. Ten years. Wild. And I know he also produced Stephen Gary for yes, a while. Yes, he did. And some other big radio shows. Yep. But uh, he was with you the longest. When you went through all the, the radio stations uh, over the years, mm-hmm. did you find that the radio stations in the smaller cities, that it was a warmer atmosphere than the corporate big city radio stations? Well, I've never been in a radio station that was as much fun as WLS was in that time period that I'm talking about. And at that time, they were owned by the ABC network, mm-hmm. which is doesn't get much more corporate than they that. They still are. Uh, but it was just... Amazing. Um, I think it depends on the people uh-huh. more than uh-huh. the owner. Uh, in today's radio atmosphere, though, um, I don't think that there's much of that because uh, it's so corporate. And in the 90s, the laws were changed to allow 
one company to own hundreds of stations, hundreds of stations mm -hmm. and that led to cutbacks and syndication and uh, lack of local personality, if you will. Mm -hmm. And um, there wasn't that sense. The, the the experience I had with those corp those big entities were not that warm feeling that I had. But I, I don't think it had anything to do with uh, the size of the, the radio station. It had to do with the people who ran it and who were there. So I want to go to another subject, which I've been waiting to talk with you about, and that's uh, Landecker and the Legends. Okay. You are a great singer. You're a great performer. Oh, you are, you're good with parodies. You're good with originals. You're good with copies. You are a great performer. Oh, when did you. you start singing professionally? <laughs> and how did you end up uh, you know what? with a he, radio He's wrong. DJ I'm man. telling you. So I'm not wrong. He's exaggerating. I'm going to show clips of he's you. He's exaggerating beyond belief. I'm going to show clips of you uh, uh, back in the day with me and uh, when we both had hair on our hands. You with your band. You, you, you are great, and I still am a big oh, admirer of Landecker and the Legends. I it was done, that band thing was done simply because I felt it was a way to promote the radio station and the morning show. Uh -huh. It wasn't that, you know, I really can't but sing. But you, you, you practiced I, a lot. I can't sing. I can, I can stumble through some oldies tunes and maybe not embarrass myself, but I'm not really... A singer. So before Landecker Legends, you never played with a band? No. Well, no. Um, in the 70s, I did show up uh, with a band called The Kind, mm -hmm. and I'd come on and sing Gloria, and that'd uh -huh. be it. And then members of The Kind ended up in Landecker and the Legends uh -huh. years oh, later. No, that's so yeah. nice. It's but so no, nice. I never... Uh, I, I would never guess that because I never it was such a professional show. Thank you. And uh, so entertaining. And, uh, you know, you toured all over the place. You had gigantic yeah, crowds, yeah. thousands of people coming yeah. to see yeah. Landecker and the Legends. Yeah. And it wasn't just because of the name John Records Landecker. It was because L Landecker and the Legends were great. Well, the Legends were a fantastic yeah, band. A great band. Great Absolutely band. A great band. Great band. And your parodies were funny as can Thank be. Thank you. Thanks. And uh, the oldies were... Were, were things that people wanted to hear. Yep. You, you. We were we were there to put on a party. It you know what I mean? Party. It, it was it, a party. And not take ourselves seriously. And I think we succeeded so, in that. You know, as time runs down, I don't want to forget to ask you, what what did the Hall of Fame mean to you to be inducted into the Hall of Fame? How how did that affect your life emotionally and uh, professionally? You know, I really don't think it's fully sunk in. Um, it's. Uh, I, an out-of-body experience, would that be uh, sure, appropriate? Sure. Uh, I've been grateful and all of that and humbled, uh, but um, it's, uh, well, I've never been in a Hall of Fame before, so I don't have anything to compare right. it to, but uh, it's, when I look back, here's the thing. When I look back at who was in the Radio Hall of Fame, and we're going back to the 30s, sure. okay. I happen to be a big Lone Ranger fan. Mm -hmm. And the Lone Ranger started in radio sure. in Detroit. 
1933. And the guy that wrote it all, who came up with the entire story, is named Franz Stryker. And I've been sort of researching his life over the past few years, and lo and behold, he is in the Radio Hall of Fame. Yes, he is. And I'm like, wow. That's very that, cool. was a, that was an aha moment. Um, so I guess it's like, what's it like being in the Radio Hall of Fame? Well, I'm in there with Fred Stryker. Yeah. But you know what else is sort of cool? There's a lot of, uh, there's a very, there's a big representation of WLS in there. Uh -huh. Larry Lujak is in, Dick Biondi, sure. myself, Yvonne Daniels. Dick Biondi, I've had on the show too. Hi, I'm Dick Biondi, and you're watching Hit with Rabbi Doug. Four, four, uh, four members from one station? Right. I don't know um, yes. if any other station has any Connection anything like, like that. that at all. Sure, sure. And, yeah. and, and here from one city and one station, it is kind of amazing. Yeah, kind isn't of it? amazing. Um, I can't thank you enough for being on the show. Oh, first my of pleasure. All. Uh, I know you had to drive down from Indiana to come and be here, <laughs> and I appreciate it very much. Um, I wish you so much more success. I know you're doing some radio right now uh, in Indiana, and uh, uh, you're no longer doing your um, uh, show, which was uh, nationally syndicated. Right. But uh, we're looking forward to you being back in Chicago. I know how radio goes. It's kind of in and out, and all of a sudden somebody calls and says, let's get John to do this show. And I hope that'd back. be great. Uh, you still want to be on the air. Sure. That's great. Yeah. That's great. And I'm glad you're on the air, but we'd love to have you back here Thank in Chicago. You, Thank and, you, As you have been for so many years. It is my great pleasure and honor to have you on the show with Thank me. Thank you. Uh, John Records Landecker. Uh, Radio Hall of Famer, yep. um, DJ icon <laughs> for the city of Chicago and the suburbs. Um, uh, your wonderful book, uh, the Hall of Fame edition, the newest edition of Records Truly Is My Middle Name, John Records Landecker, uh, produced by Rick Kempfer. There right, it is there right it is. there. And the cover photo uh, by Chuck Knapp. That was... Uh, uh, that's me in the middle, obviously. That's my. It's not the back of Howard Stern. No, no. <laughs> that's my oldest daughter Tracy on the left, and my youngest daughter Amy on the right, staring out at Lake Michigan. And they both live in California now. Yes. They both live in California. Yeah. Very nice. Well, I, once again, thank you so much thank for being you, on the Mary. show. Anytime. I want to thank all of you for being with us. Remember, if you want to check out our website, it's www.tvrabbi.com, where you can also see former shows on the web, including. My former show, having John Records <laughs> Landecker as my guest with uh, oh, and the yeah, Legends. Boy. And uh, if you want to send John an email and know more about his book, the email address is info at tvrabbi.com. I will forward it to John, and I know John will certainly get back to you personally. I want to thank all of you for being with us. I want to thank John Records Landecker for being on the show. Thank and you. I hope to see you again very soon. That would be great. And continued success in your writing career, thank you. in your radio career, and in your career as being a Hall of Famer. Uh, thanks for being with us, everyone. We'll see you next time right here on Tape with Rabbi Doug. Shalom, everyone. <laughs> This has been a Taped with Rabbi Doug production.